Mr. Money Mustache is known to many as the man who retired early, at just 30 years old. After college graduation, that means he was only in the workforce for about eight years. However, he's faced criticism by others who claim he isn't really retired and he's in fact very much still working, running multiple businesses. Now in his mid-40s, he's been retired from his engineering job for about 15 years. But how does he spend his time? Does he really spend his days relaxing in his hometown of Longmont, Colorado, or is he pursuing other efforts that cushion his bank account while portraying that he's retired at an exceptionally young age? After all, his efforts have added popularity to the movement of becoming financially independent and retiring early. Let's take a look at what his life looks like. My name is Chris, and I help teach people about money, personal finance, and investing. If you're interested in improving your financial future, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if this video is helpful. Pete Adney, or Mr. Money Mustache, begins his days without an alarm clock, choosing to wake up naturally, but that doesn't mean he doesn't like to work. In fact, he enjoys working in his free time. He enjoys physical work in particular. Pete is often happy to help his friends or family with their construction needs free of charge and charging others a small fee for his services. His knowledge of construction comes from the projects he's done for himself and his family, including his personal residences that have been renovated. He's also learned from fixing up rental homes with his friend. In the past, he's purchased unlivable homes, fixed them up, and rented them out, earning about a 10% return. Pete's affinity for working with his hands has even let him do his own plumbing and install his own furnace. While that might sound worse than the engineering job he held prior, his enjoyment of working with his hands also helped him create the finished product of his latest business, which we'll cover later. Sharing his knowledge of finance and money is also something Pete does with his time. He is happy to help his friends and family by having meetings to discuss their finances and designing spreadsheets with them. However, it's unlikely that these folks share the same minimalistic approach to finance. In prior years, when he was still in the engineering field, Pete also offered his advice to coworkers, even making presentations about how to join the FIRE movement. It's clear that he finds it rewarding to help others achieve their goals, even if it involves helping friends fix up rundown rental homes. At the time of his retirement, Mr. Money Mustache had a portfolio worth about $600,000 in addition to his personal residence, which was paid off. With expenses of $25,000 per year, those numbers align with the industry standard 4% withdrawal rate. That's a decent sized start to a nest egg, but the real money comes from the blog Pete started back in 2011. The Mr. Money Mustache blog reportedly earned Pete over $400,000 per year, primarily from commissions collected from banks, investment services, and other financial products he recommends, bringing his estimated net worth upwards of $5 million. This post-retirement job incredibly created most of his wealth. A few years ago, Pete launched the Mr. Money Mustache YouTube channel, where he occasionally shares about his construction projects and some financial advice. Pete's son produces and edits the videos and adds his own music. Although he doesn't have a large library of videos on his channel, he likely earns a decent paycheck from the small selection of videos he does have due to the influx of viewers coming from the blog. In one month alone, his YouTube videos are collectively viewed almost half a million times, adding to the revenue of the Mr. Money Mustache business. You might guess that he doesn't enjoy creating YouTube videos as much as he enjoys his other projects. His most recent endeavor is the founding of a co-working space in his town. In 2017, he purchased a building in Longmont, which he uses as a space for professionals to socialize and collaborate. Starting with a rundown historic house, it's been restored into a place to hold various events. Now set up with a variety of large and small rooms, it's like a large coffee shop with an outdoor patio. Aiming for a list of 200 members, a space has become a spot where entrepreneurs or just people who like to get out of the house go to socialize, get together, and collaborate. The club has a long list of amenities, including a tool-sharing library, free coffee, an outdoor gym, free beer and ciders, free bikes, and more, with 24-7 keypad access. Running an operation such as this and ensuring it's worth the $52 monthly fee to be a member surely consumes a substantial amount of time. Additionally, Pete's daily responsibilities include the opening and cleaning of the club. Working takes up about half of his time, and the rest is spent with his son when he's not at school. Spending as much time as possible with his now teenage son is important to Pete, and becoming financially free at a young age allows him to do just that. Pete prioritizes his time with his son and works on his projects when his son is busy. 
Those who hold full time jobs and aren't financially free often must do just the opposite, prioritizing their work and putting their family in the back burner, because that's what's required of them. After all, the bills aren't going to pay themselves. Being financially independent at such a young age, Pete and his wife were able to save money by staying home with their son instead of paying for childcare, which on average costs almost $1,300 per month. That cost alone would consume most of his monthly budget. Pete and his wife were divorced a few years ago. Getting divorced could have ruined his retirement budget had he not created alternative income sources by working. The $600,000 saved collectively might be enough to pay for one household, but when split in half, that sum wouldn't even generate $1,100 per month in income. This is a perfect example of why you should be on the conservative side when planning for retirement expenses, particularly when retiring in your early 30s. You want to have enough money saved in case you run into unfortunate circumstances. Admittedly, Pete does work, but he chooses his work not based on the pay, but whether or not he enjoys the task, blogging, running his co-working space, and doing construction. This mentality aligns with the advice of many successful entrepreneurs. Focus on doing what you enjoy and the money will follow, and that's clearly been the case with Pete. He believes that earning more money won't make you happier if you already have what you need. In other words, He's made enough money to become financially independent and buy what he wants or needs, which isn't very much considering his minimalistic approach to life. He has a home, a car, which hardly gets used, a bike, and not much else. When approached about a job or business opportunity, Pete asks himself if he would do it for free. If not, there's really no point in wasting time. Most of us could find another place to put some extra money, but this is much different than Pete's spending philosophy. It may be a little misleading to label Mr. Money Mustache as retired. A more accurate statement would be financially independent, which allows him to live life on his terms, working when he wants and on what he wants, instead of being enslaved to a 9-to-5. Getting back into some type of work is actually a common occurrence among many young retirees or young people who reach financial independence. A bunch of fun and unexpected stuff happens when you stop working for a living, Pete says. Starting a second career, doing something for enjoyment instead of for money, sometimes leads to larger success. This is clearly the case here. According to Pete, many people, especially in the United States, have more than they need, describing the middle-class lifestyle as an exploding volcano of wastefulness. He suggests that if you have a boat or a lake house that doesn't get used much, just sell it to reduce costs and free up mental space. That's sound advice if those things don't provide much satisfaction in relation to their costs. Biking around town and finding ways to pinch every penny sounds like a job in itself, but Pete's minimalistic personality allows him to find enjoyment from reducing needs. For most of us, being absurdly frugal and thrifty isn't part of our retirement plan, and it's more rewarding to work a little longer so we have the ability to buy items and experiences to enhance our lives.